Romans chapter 6. <clears throat> you have it, say amen. A couple of us. Romans chapter 6, verse number 1. says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him in the baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Aren't you glad we can be free from sin this morning? Amen. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, uh, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead Indeed, unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. As those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Amen. That'll be all of our reading there in Romans 6. The title of my lesson this morning is being identified with Christ. Identified with Christ. Amen. I want to be identified with Christ this morning, don't you? Amen. Um, you know... As a Christian, you know, some may look at us and may identify us with certain things. And, and you know, but what's most important this morning, that if we live our life in such a way that we are identified with Christ. Amen. I've said it many times in Sunday school that we, we live our life in such a way that when others look into us, they don't see me. Amen. That they see Christ. And the only way that that is possible is that we identify with Christ. Now we know we're living in a world where identity is a problem, ain't it? <laughs> uh, a lot of people don't know who they are or what they are. I um, mean, it's sad to be in that place, isn't it? Uh, to, to the devil to have your mind so confused that you're not sure what you are or who you are. It's just the work of the enemy. Uh, amen, but we need to be identified with Christ this morning. Don't you agree? You think about Peter when Jesus was crucified. You know, they, they come to Peter and say, Hey, aren't you one of them? You know, you're part of, of Jesus Christ. You're part of his brethren. In so many words, Peter, he didn't want to own up to it, did he? The Lord told him he was going to deny him. Peter was having one of those identity crises, you could say. Amen. But let's never find ourselves in that place. Amen. It don't matter how much pressure the world may put on us as they were putting on Peter. Hey, you are one of them. Amen. Let's gladly say, yes, I'm one of them. Amen. Yes, I'm identified with Christ this morning. Uh, why do I want to be identified with Christ? Because it's the best way. Amen. There's peace being identified with Christ. Amen. You know where you're at when you're identified with Christ. 
Amen. The devil likes to confuse people. He likes to confuse our minds that we don't know where we're at or like I already said or what we are or who we are. Amen. But you can settle that this morning when we become identified with Christ. Praise God. Christians must over overcome temptations, but many live a defeated life. I don't want to live a defeated life this morning. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm sure nobody just takes pleasure in losing anything. None of us do. I don't like to play in a game or anything. I, I don't like to lose. Uh, that don't give me pleasure in just losing. Uh, yeah. Amen. And we all want to win, don't we? Amen. Let's be uh, the same way in our, in our life, in our Christian walk. Let's want to win. Amen. Just as if we were out competing with somebody else. We live in a competitive world. Uh, where sports are so involved in everything and, and uh, people just glue to it. Hey, my team's got to win. Oh, that we could transform that same uh, enthusiasm, I guess that's the right word, uh, into our Christian walk with God that we be the same way, that I've got to win. We have to win. Amen. I don't want to lose this morning. Do you? Amen. Because you know what the consequences of losing is? It's hell forever. Amen. There's a lot bigger trophy when it, uh, amen, presented before us in our Christian walk. Amen. And that's heaven. You can't get no better trophy for winning than heaven. Amen. Praise God. I want to make it to heaven this morning, don't you? Amen. Let's be winners. Let's be identified with Christ. That's how I become a winner. That's how I live a life that is not defeated. That I can overcome temptation. That I can overcome sin. And we overcome these things by being identified with Christ. Christ's death and resurrection, as we was reading here in these scriptures, is our key to victory. Amen. Don't you believe that this morning? Praise God. Christ is your key to is my key to victory. Praise God. If we identify with Him, sin loses the battle. Sin loses. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10 says, Have we put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of Him that created Him. Amen. We put on a new man. That's that process of becoming identified with Christ. The Bible says, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of Him. Who's Him? Jesus Christ. God. Amen. Being renewed in the knowledge after the image of God. Uh, him that created Him. Identity. Identified with Christ. Identity theft is becoming one of our generation's most common Criminal offenses. You know, we hear a lot about that. Identity theft, people trying to steal one another's uh, identity. Um, this happens when someone steals some vital information from an individual and uses that info to get into their uh, private accounts. Great riches have been lost by people who had their identity stolen. Uh, however bad this crime may be, there is something worse that can happen to the Christians everywhere. Those that lose their identity with Christ. Amen. The devil, he is a, an identity thief. Amen. He doesn't want us to be identified with Christ. He doesn't want us to walk after Christ. To seek after Christ. To do as Christ would have us to do. The devil is our greatest enemy this morning. Don't you believe that? Satan has hid from uh, their eyes that they have become one with the Lord Jesus in His death and resurrection. Don't let the devil paint up a big picture in front of you. Cover your eyes, you could say, to the real picture that we can overcome Him through Jesus Christ. Amen. The reason that the tempter wants the truth hidden is that people overcome temptation 
the more they identify with Christ. Amen. The more we identify with Christ. Being identified with Christ. We have to walk after Christ, don't we? We have to follow Christ. We have to go where Christ goes. Amen. We have to be close to Christ. Praise God. To be identified with Him. What great spiritual riches have been lost because people have not meditated upon this, you could say, or, or made sure that they were identified with Christ. <clears throat> Ask yourselves that question this morning. Who am I identified with? Amen. Who am I associated with, you could say? Praise God. I want to be associated with Christ, don't you? Amen. We can be victorious this morning. We can have a victorious life that Christ provided for us through His death and resurrection. Romans 6 is one of the greatest explanations as to how to overcome sin. Uh, it should be studied and memorized, no doubt. The reason that many live a defeated life is that they have never grasped the truths found here. Uh, many times the Christian faces a defeated enemy and allows them to win. It would be compared to a, a, a tribe of people declaring, you know, a, a small tribe of people declaring war on the United States. And the mightiest country in the world surrendering. How could a nation that has fighter jets, nuclear bombs, surrender to people who have spears and arrows? Think about that this morning. It would be foolish, wouldn't it? If the U.S., the great America, surrendered to some little old country way over somewhere else that all they had was spears and arrows. It would be crazy, wouldn't it? Be like, what in the world? We got all these planes. We got all these bombs. We got all the power we need. We can wipe them off the map if we needed to. But yet we just surrender to them. Here, you can have it. Amen. That's the devil. What he likes to do to us. The devil, he's just that little old tribe of where it just has spears and arrows. And here is a, God has this great power. We talked a little bit about that power last Sunday. The authority that God has. The power that he gives us. Amen. Christ, uh, the power is available through Christ that we can overcome the enemy. The devil. Amen. Christ has the greater power this morning. Amen. And I don't want to give in to a defeated enemy. Do you? Christ already defeated the enemy. Amen. I want to live with Christ. Amen. I, uh, let's see here. We have the power that is greater than all hell this morning. Amen. I truly believe that. Praise God, through Christ Jesus, we have the power that is greater than all of hell. Amen. Than all the enemies. All of Satan. Everything that he throws at us. We have the power. What's Ephesians talk about? Ephesians chapter 6. He said we have, he talks about putting on the armor of God that we may be able to quench all the fiery darts. So God has given us the power this morning that, hey, if we would be identified with Christ, that if we would be on His side, you could say this morning, that He has the power to overcome anything and everything. Amen. That gives me hope this morning. That I know I can make it as long as I am identified with Christ. I don't care what, kind of, what the devil has a hold on your life this morning. Christ has the power to have it released. Amen. He has the power that we can be delivered. Amen. God has the power to set us free from the powers of the enemy. Praise God. Amen. Don't let the devil fool you this morning. He is, he is a great deceiver, ain't he? He likes us to think that, hey, we can't make it. Hey, you can't overcome sin. You can't overcome this problem. 
You can't overcome this obstacle in your life. It's just too big. You're just going to have to surrender to it. The devil ever told you that? I'm sure he has. Many times. You just need to give in to it. You'll never overcome it. Praise God. But I tell you this morning, the devil's a liar. Because if I become identified with Christ, amen, Christ has the power that you and I can overcome anything. Amen. I don't have, care how great it is, how big the mountain is, if you can't even see the top of it. Amen. I've been there where, man, where is the top of this thing? Where's the light at the end of the tunnel? Can't even see it. Amen. But by Christ and His power, we can overcome it. Amen. He can pull us through it. If we but would hold on and continue to be identified with Christ. Amen. Let's get into these scriptures this morning. Identified with Christ. Verse number one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He's asking a question. Shall we continue in sin? Amen. That grace may abound. Now, I don't know if it's last Sunday, but it seems like recently we talked a little bit about this. You know, some teach that, hey, as long as you accept Jesus Christ once, then it don't matter what you do the rest of your life. But I'm here this morning with these scriptures to uh, defute that. Because... The Bible, is, he says, what say, uh, shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, he said in chapter 2, I mean, verse 2, I mean. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin, we become alive in Christ. <clears throat> so you know what that tells me? If I become alive in Christ, that means I will become dead to something, right? That makes sense to you? So you know what? If I'm alive in Christ, then i got to be dead to sin. I can't live in sin. He said live any longer therein. Because now that I am identified with Christ, because of God's grace that He has given us through the cross of Calvary, that I can become saved, amen, that I don't have to continue in sin. I don't have to continue in bondage. Amen. I'm glad of that this morning. That I don't have to continually be bound by sin. But because of grace, that grace abound, I can live in Christ Jesus. Free from sin. That don't say that I'm never going to make another mistake. We know that this morning. We know we're humans. We know we're apt to make mistakes. But I don't have to continue in it daily. Amen. I don't have to sin every time. I don't have to sin every day. Praise God. I don't have to live in sin. Because I am dead to sin now. And I have become identified with Christ. Therefore I am alive in Christ. Amen. I hope that makes sense to you this morning. That we can be alive in Christ. Dead to sin. Free from sin. Free from bondage. Amen. Free from all of the the problems that the devil brings us. Amen. With sin. I know we're still going to have problems. We're still going to have to fight the devil. But you know what? It's so much easier as we're already talking about to fight the enemy when we're identified with Christ. Because the devil can't overcome Christ. Can we agree on that this morning? Amen. He can't do it. It's impossible. As much as the devil wants to, as much as the devil de tries to destroy the things of Christ, he will never destroy it. Never. Amen. I want to be on the winning side, don't you? Amen. We don't have to continue in sin. A believer must always be vigilant, lest he become too confident and fall away from the truth. The Bible talks that to be vigilant, to be sober. Because of our enemy, our adversary, the devil, who walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The devil is always seeking to devour. Everything the devil does is, is to destroy. He don't build anything. The devil's not a builder this morning. He couldn't build anything to save his life. He is a destroyer. 
Amen. Christ is the builder who builds up. Through Christ we build things. Amen. Build the kingdom of God. You can go on with that. But uh, we this morning must be vigilant. Be sober. We know what sober means, don't we? Be in my right mind. I'm not confused. I can see straight. Amen. To be sober. Be vigilant. Unless the enemy overcome us. Amen. I don't want the enemy to overcome me. Do you? But I guarantee you the moment I quit being vigilant. The moment I quit thinking and watching. Amen. And being sober as the Bible says. Amen. That's whenever we will fall away. The devil, that's what he's looking for. That moment that we take our eyes off. The moment that we take a break, you could say, this morning. Amen. That's the moment the devil's looking for. That moment that we quit being vigilant. And then that's when he pounces on. Amen. The, the devil, he is smart. No doubt. Amen. He is, as the Bible says, the great deceiver. He knows how to do his job. Amen. The devil knows our weakest points, don't he? Why don't he? You know, you may think, well, why don't the devil bother me somewhere else I don't have no problem with? Why has he always got to attack my, my weakest points? That's just the devil. Because the devil knows our weakest places where he can break us down. Amen. That we may fall to. Praise God. But we can be overcomers this morning. If we be vigilant. If we be sober. If we be identified with Christ. Through His grace. Amen. We can live in Christ Jesus. Be dead to sin. Live any longer therein. God forbid that, He said. Don't live in sin. Amen. Live with Christ where there's peace, where there's happiness, where there's joy. Amen. Praise God. Let's see here. Verse number 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. Amen. Baptism. Outward testimony of an inward experience. Excuse me. We become bat we be baptized. I know probably a lot of us has been baptized. Uh, bap just going under the water and coming up, that's not what saves us, is it? No. We can agree on that this morning. But what baptism is, as he, he's saying there, know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, baptized into his death, baptism is, is an outward testimony. He's saying, hey, he meant I've been changed. On the inside. An outward testimony of an inward experience. That God has done a work in my life. That I'm no longer the man that I used to be. The woman that I used to be. That I am changed. Amen. An inward experience. Baptism. An outward expression of an inward experience. Therefore we are buried with Him. Verse number 4. By baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Because Christ died, because He was raised from the dead by the power of God, the same way with us this morning as we are dead to sin, as He started out here in those Scriptures, being dead to sin, now we're alive in Christ. So just think about it as Jesus died, then he rose again. Amen. As we rise again as a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. That the old things are passed away, as the Bible says. Amen. That the sin, I'm no longer that same person. I'm no longer identified as the man that I used to be identified with. I'm no longer, amen, bound by sin, but I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Praise God. And now I can walk. In newness of life. 
He meant I can be a new creature in Christ Jesus. I don't walk where I used to walk. Amen? I don't go the places I used to go to. I don't talk the way I used to talk to. Because now I've laid the old man down. I've been dead to sin and I'm alive in Christ. Amen? I'm a different creature. And again, it's a process this morning. It don't always just happen like that, does it? It'd be nice if it did. Amen? We know this morning that it is a continual process that we go through. Amen? And in our mind, being renewed in our mind. Amen? We have to reprogram those things in our mind. That's part of walking in that new life in Christ Jesus. How do I change my thoughts? How do I renew my mind? How do I get rid of those old ways that I used to, to think the way I used to think? It's by praying. It's by reading God's Word. Filling our mind with heavenly things. Amen. That we can live and walk in a new life. Amen. Praise God. I want to be that new creature in Christ Jesus, don't you? Amen. Amen. Verse number 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Amen. If we are planted together in the likeness of His death, again, talking about that, that dying out, we are planted in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Praise God. Amen. I'm glad that I don't have to be the man that I used to be. Amen to that. I'm glad this morning that whenever I come down to an altar and I surrender it to God, I become a new creature in Christ Jesus, that I'm not the man that I used to be. Amen. Praise God. He said, God forbid that we should continue in sin. Amen. If God has saved you this morning. God has to del delivered you this morning. Walk away from it. That's not who I am anymore. Amen. I'm becoming a new person in Christ Jesus. It's the only way for it to work. Amen. We'll never be happy continuing in sin. Never. Amen. Christ's death and resurrection are inseparable events in history. Likewise, when a person... <clears throat> excuse me, is in union with Christ, death, it automatically follows that resurrection. Life uh, will empower him to live holy because of that same power that raised Jesus Christ. Amen. That can help us this morning. Excuse me. To live a holy life. Paul here, he wants to enforce... The surety of victory in the life of a Christian. Amen. You can guarantee it this morning. If you continually walk after Christ. If you continually to be identified with Christ. If you stay where Christ wants you to stay. You walk where Christ wants you to walk. There is surety of victory. Amen. I'm glad this morning that I can be sure of where I'm going. I'm glad this morning that I don't have to just say, well, I, I hope I make it to heaven. And I, I hope by chance I make it. But you know what? This morning we can be sure of it. I can know, hey, if God comes back right now, hey, if my life is over right now, I'm going to heaven. Amen. That's true peace this morning. Knowing, amen, that we, uh, where we're going, that's what Paul here is, hey, you can be sure this morning that if you're dead to sin, that if you're alive in Christ Jesus, we can have a victorious life if we continue to be identified with Christ. I hope this is helping you this morning. Amen. To be identified with Christ. Again, there is identity problem in our world. Amen. Don't be involved in it. Amen. Know who you are this morning. Amen. Praise God. It's just the devil confusing our world. Amen. I don't want to be confused this morning. Praise God. 
Then we have freedom through identification. Verse number 6. Knowing this, just as I've been explaining about dying out, being dead to sin, being a new creature in Christ, <clears throat> walking in the newness of life. And then verse 6, he said, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. That's plain, ain't it? I shouldn't serve sin. Now that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. I, I don't know what some people do with that verse. He said you should not serve sin. Old man. In this verse stands for the, the sinful nature. We know that this morning, don't we? The, when the Bible speaks of the old man, we're talking about the, the old sinful nature of, our, of us, of the flesh. Uh, the old life. Christians lived before they were saved. The only way to get victory over this, the old man, is by his death. Amen. He has to be dead. And you know what this morning? He has to stay dead. Because that's one man that likes to rise from the dead. Amen. He, he don't like to stay dead, does he? Amen. Uh, he's one that seems to be immortal, don't he? He likes to keep rising back up and stay dead. Amen. Uh, you know what we got to do? We just got to stand on top of him. Amen. Uh, by the power of Jesus Christ, by, by being identified with Christ, we can have freedom through identification. Amen. That old man can stay dead. Amen. We don't have to go back to that. You don't have to go back to where Jesus has brought you from. You don't have to go back to the old life. You don't have to go back to serving sin. Amen. I don't have to be the man I used to be. The devil, he likes to remind us of our past, don't he? Every day, he likes to remind us of what we did yesterday, of what we did before. But you know what? This morning, just tell the devil, hey, I got freedom through Jesus Christ of that old man. Amen. That that's not the man that I am today. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Praise God. The old man is dead. And he can stay dead. Amen. But you know what? It's going to take some work on our part. He ain't just going to lay down like we already said and stay laying there. Amen. I'm going to have to continue to pray. I'm going to have to uh, continue to, to seek God. To read His Word. Amen. To follow after God. I guarantee you the moment that I quit doing that, that's the moment we step off of that old man and he rises back up. Amen. But he can stay dead this morning in your life. He don't have to rise again. Amen. I'm so glad this morning that I can be free from sin. I can be free from the past. Amen. You know what? Think about it this morning. Jesus, God, He don't ever throw those things up in front of our faces does he he don't ever throw up our past in front of our faces God won't do that he never does because when God forgives he forgets thank God amen it's just the devil this morning that keeps throwing those things up in front of us because as I said a while ago the devil knows our weakness he knows our past he knows what he used yesterday to get me. And you know what? So he's going to try it again today. But I can be an overcomer this morning. You can be an overcomer. Amen. You can live in freedom through identification with Christ. Amen. Sin has no authority this morning over the believer. I'm going to say that again. Sin has no authority over the believer. Amen. You just need to remind the devil every day, you do not have authority over me. You do not have authority over me. You do not have authority over me. Amen. I am, I am the son of God. I am the woman of God. 
Amen. Praise God. I'm glad that sin doesn't have authority over me. Aren't you? Amen. I think that clock goes a little faster every Sunday. Man. Uh, freedom from sin. Verse number 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Praise God. He that is dead is freed from sin. Amen. Praise God. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to wrap this up somehow. Uh, let's see here. Voice, verse number 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Death frees from all obligation. Think about it. If a dead person got to the cemetery straight through yonder. Not a one of those people have any obligations here, do they? Nothing. They have no care here on this world. It don't matter. The government has no authority over any of them, does it? Nobody does. Why? They're dead. Amen. What's the scripture say again? For he that is dead is freed from sin. Amen. We need to be dead this morning. Amen, that old man, dead. Praise God that he don't have that authority anymore. Amen, the, the dead in the, in the cemetery, they don't have no obligations to pay any bills, do they? Man, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> uh, they don't have any obligation to take care of anything in this world when they're dead. Praise God. Sin can claim authority over those who are alive. Think about that this morning. Sin can claim authority over those who are alive. Who are alive in sin. But Christ said, Amen, that we'd be dead to sin and not live any longer therein. And that means that if I'm dead to sin, then I'm alive in Christ. And being alive in Christ, amen, sin has no authority. Amen. Sin only has authority over those that are alive to it. But there is freedom for those who are one with Christ. Amen. We can be free from sin this morning. Amen. If sin has authority on your life this morning, if it controls you, Amen, if it, it controls your life. Amen, we can be free from that this morning. You can be free from the bondage of sin. Thank God for that this morning. That I can be free from bondage. From the yoke of sin. Amen. Praise God. Verse number 8. He said, now if we be dead with Christ... We believe that we shall also live with Him. Death is a definite experience, ain't it? Death is something that you can guarantee in your life. I'm going to die one day. I don't know when it's going to be. I was joking around with my wife on the way home yesterday. Uh, I said, I'm, I'm, you may not have to worry about me talking much longer. <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to die. I could die tomorrow. Amen. Death is a definite thing that we're going to face. Death is one appointment that we won't miss or be late to. <laughs> Amen. We may be late to everything else. We won't be late to that. Amen. Praise God. Death is a definite experience. But life is a progression of learning and growing amen i'll convert that to spiritually this morning as death amen as it's over with with sin being dead to sin i hope i'm explaining this good enough for you this morning amen being dead to sin and now that we are alive in christ it's a progression it's a process of learning and growing amen as i follow christ one man said this week, amen, if we are identified with Christ, if we're following Christ, 
We're walking the same path that Christ is walking. Amen. I'm stepping in the same footsteps that He's stepping in. Amen. I'm going where Christ goes. Because I'm following Christ. Amen. And we ought to be following Christ this morning. As He said, close enough to hear His heartbeat. That's how we know what Christ wants for our life. Whenever we're walking next to Him. Amen. Praise God. And He can direct us. He can lead us that way. Amen. We need a closer walk with Him this morning, don't we? Amen. I need a closer walk with Christ. Praise God. Amen. Let's see here. I'm, I'll try to close this. That clock's five minutes behind. Uh, let's see here. We can be identified with Christ. We can have freedom through identification. Amen. We can have freedom through Christ Jesus this morning. Don't you believe it? Amen. Amen. Hey, Christians, not only is free from the power of sin, but has a new power within them to live differently. Amen. You not only have the power to be free from sin, but you have the power to live differently. Different than I used to live. Amen. Praise God. I hope you'll grab a hold of that this morning. That in Christ Jesus, and that if I'll be identified with Him, I have the power to be free from sin, and I have the power to be different. Amen. I can be a different person. I've seen it. Folks that come down and get saved. Amen. It's like whenever they get up from the altar, I already see a different man, a different woman. Why is that? It's because of the power of Jesus Christ that works within us. And then as we go, as we walk with Christ, we continually to be different. Amen. Praise God. A cartoonist, Mary Chambers, had a personal saying. Well, I haven't actually died to sin, but I did feel kind of faint once. There are many that only feel a little faint to sin, but we need a radical experience of death to have victory. Amen. Don't just feel a little faint this morning. Amen. But be dead to sin. Have that radical experience with Jesus Christ. Amen. That's how we become a new creature in Christ. Let's stand this morning.